Gentlemen, we are live. Welcome to today's LinkedIn Live. And we're talking the top seven things men over 40 need to burn body fat and stay in shape forever. And yes, it is entirely possible. Entirely possible. So, oh. So I just thought I'd um, stop recording there. Hopefully this is still recording. Uh, if you can see me, gents, let me know where you are in the world. If you've got a question, by all means, drop it into the chat. Let me know where you are. Anyone joining us? Anyone joining us? If you've got questions at any time, drop it into the chat. If it doesn't interrupt the flow of everything, I will answer the questions. If for some reason I see it um, and I can't get to it because I'm in the middle of something, I'll pop up on the screen and we'll do a Q&A at the end. If you've got any questions, please drop it into the, into the chat. That would be most grateful. And um, we'll get cra we're cracking in a few minutes. Hope to get this done in about 45 minutes. Lots to cover. Lots of ideas around mindset, nutrition, training, everything that you're going to need to get in great shape. Can anyone see me? Let me know if you can. Anyone there? Anyone live? I'm talking to myself. All right, guys, we're going to crack on regardless. Okay, as I said, the top seven things men need, men over 40 need to burn body fat and stay in shape forever. And yes, it is entirely possible. Okay, here's what we're going to cover. The seven main topics that we're going to look at. All right, Michael, thank you. Morning, sir. Welcome. So seven things. Number one, nutrition plan that works. Without that, everything else is irrelevant. Okay, so that is our number one, the number one thing. Um, number two, a massive reason why. Number three, patience. Number four, bulletproof mindset. Number five, discipline. Number six, consistency. And you'll notice I mentioned number seven, exercise. It's important, but there's a whole load of things much more important than exercise when it comes to burning body fat. Okay, so there's our main topics. Let's get straight into it. Well, first of all, you know, who am I? Why listen to me? Most of you know me uh, from LinkedIn, but maybe you're new to the things that I talk about. Maybe not. Maybe you've seen me for a while, but I've been in this business quite a long time. Did my degree in sports and exercise science back in 1993. Graduated in 96. Uh, I'm a certified sports nutritionist with the ISSN. I just actually popped up on my LinkedIn. That was 10 years ago. Um, written and featured in Men's Health, Men's Fitness, Hello, OK. The Times, don't hold it against me with Hello and OK. They asked me to do a piece, so I did something. Um, I need to actually update this slide, actually. Trained and coached over 450 men, actually, in the last six years in my online program. I'm the published author of the GHG Method. I sold thousands of copies now in the last four years. Here we are, the GHG Method. Um, can get a copy. Well worth 16 quid. All right, so that's me. A few things I've done. And I just wanted to show you a couple of testimonials. A lot of people will talk fitness. A lot of people um, talk the talk, but they can't walk the walk. There's actually over 100 testimonials on my website, gabgillybrand.com, in the testimonial section if you want to check these out. But I've just pulled a couple of ones that stood out for me. And these results are all in um, 12, week, 12 or 16 weeks. Robin lost 37 pounds in 12 weeks. Mark lost 33 pounds in 12 weeks. Matt lost 30. Duncan lost 28 pounds. Mike lost 22 pounds. Steve lost 38 pounds again in 12 weeks. Mike, although only 22 pounds there, it was actually an incredible testimony. It looks a lot more than that. Um, 
And also, I've got a cheat sheet. If you want a copy of this, chaps, just um, just drop me a message. Just drop me an, uh, an email. Hello at gabgillybrand.com. If you want a free copy of this, it's a, it's a PDF with five very important weight loss hacks. It's kind of some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about today. There's a few different things. There's a few programs, a few other ideas I cover in my coaching program. But if you want me to send over a PDF, um, just drop me a message or let me know here. Drop your email into the chat and I will make sure that you get a copy. All right, that said. All right, number one, a plan that works. Now, I know this sounds bloody obvious, but I see so many people, <clears throat> excuse me, being super motivated and disciplined and driven, but they're not following a plan, one, that's going to work, and two, that's sustainable. Okay, so you have to have a plan that works. And the only way that we lose body fat, okay, it doesn't matter what, ve what diet you go on, vegan, carnivore, south beach, high protein, low protein, high carb, low carb, they all work exactly the same with the same mechanism. You have to be in a calorie deficit. It's fucking futile and stupid and moronic to think anything else. You have to be in a calorie deficit to burn body fat. And I occasionally get some people come come to me and say, Gav, I'm eating 1,200 calories, I'm exercising quite a lot, and I'm just not losing body fat. Well, one, I don't believe you're only eating 1,200 calories. And if you were only eating 1,200 calories, somewhere along the lines, it means you're not in a deficit. Uh, for most people, unless they were like four foot and weighed about 80 pounds, 1,200 calories is going to be in a deficit. So when someone says that, the red flag goes up. But the first thing we would look at, you have to be in a calorie deficit. Um, you know, um, obviously, I want you to look at your calories like you would your finances. If you think about this is you in the middle and on the left hand side, all the calories that you eat and drink in a 24 hour period, let's call that calories in. On the right hand side of this equation, we've got all the calories going out or energy expended. And the same with finances, you've got a budget every month. If you're, if you're employed, they pay you, they pay you money on a certain day of the month. You probably wish it was more, but they pay you a chunk of money. And then you've got mortgage, car payments, kids, insurances, all the different outgoings. It's exactly the same. We give our clients a budget. We hit, get them to hit a calorie um, for the day and calories over the seven days. So, for example, if I gave you 2,000 calories a day, that was your budget for the day, it would equate to 14,000 calories over the week. Now, if this was pounds or dollars, if you're given a $14,000 budget, it doesn't matter what you spend day to day. You can do 3,000 one day, 1,500 the next, 1800 one day, 2300 the next. As long as you come under budget, if you're in a calorie deficit, you lose body fat. So we get our um, clients to hit calories, have a target, and also aim for protein every day. Now, fats and carbohydrates can interchange. Carbs can be higher, fats can be lower. Fats can be higher, carbs can be lower. And I allow clients to have that flexibility because flexibility equals sustainability. Okay. So that's the only thing you need to think about. If you're trying to lose body fat, you need a plan that works and need a plan that you can get into a calorie deficit and a plan that it can be sustainable. That's the key. Every diet works, but not every diet is sustainable. Think about that. Every single diet on the planet works. If it gets you to eat fewer calories than you burn, it will work. But can it be sustainable? If I said to you, if you're looking to lose 30 pounds, so just go on 800 calorie diet. It doesn't matter what you eat. Just eat 800 calories a day. I'll see you in 12 weeks. I guarantee you'll be 30 pounds down. You'll be suicidal. You'll be starved. Lose a lot of muscle. Your health would be not great, but you've lost a shit ton of weight. So the best diet is the one you can sustain. Okay? Plan that works. There's a calorie deficit. This is my definition. Eat fewer calories than you burn or burn more calories than you consume. Fat loss is simply staying there for as long as you can whilst maintaining every other area of your life. And that means going to work, exercising, looking after your family, doing everything you need to do in your life. Can you sustain it for, a, for an extended period of time whilst maintaining function? If you're starving and you've got no energy to go to the gym and you're irritable because you're always hungry, yes, you're in a deficit. But is it the plan that you need to be on? The answer is probably no. 
I want to take this a bit further into macros. And this is really important that you understand the basics behind this. Now, I've been coaching people. I've been involved in the fitness industry for close to 30 years. But I've been working with um, clients online for six years and on a full-time basis, one-to-one for close to 20 years. And in all that time, there's probably been a handful of people, and I mean a handful, like four or five people, that I've, when I've asked them, do you know how many calories are in a gram of carbohydrate, protein, or fat, or even alcohol, they've actually known the answer. I swear, it's probably even less than that. Most people don't know this. And this is equivalent to giving a five-pound note, five-dollar note, five-dollar note, and getting that child, a five, six-year-old boy or girl, to walk into a sweet shop and say, go and buy some sweets. They know that they've got money in their hand, but they have no idea of the value. And this is why most people struggle with, well, find it easy to gain weight and struggle with losing weight and maintaining that weight. Because they've got no idea, they've got no idea of the value. Nearly everyone I work with does not know there's four calories in a gram of carbohydrate. That's like saying, well, how much is a $5 bill worth? And you as an adult, well, no idea. I can buy something with it, but I have no idea what it's worth. And that's exactly the same with fucking calories, okay? So four calories in a gram of carbohydrate. There's four calories in one gram of protein. There's nine calories in a gram of fat, seven calories in a gram of alcohol. And I put alcohol down there because it's part of many people's nutritional intake, but it's not a macro that we need, okay? Body, you know... The argument is out there. Do we actually need carbohydrates? Are they essential? Maybe they're not, but we, we like them and they can be very beneficial. Protein fats are essential. Alcohol is absolutely not essential. We also enjoy that as well. And how we do this, you know, I talked about calories and a, a budget and finances we track. And my fitness power is one of the best ones. There's about 10 really good ones out there. This is the one that I use with my, my clients. There's a free version. There's also a paid version. I get my clients up, um, upgrade to the uh, to the paid version. It's about 50 bucks a year, 50 bucks a year, but it's worth it. Definitely worth it. Um, so we track our calories, give everyone a budget each day, a daily budget and a weekly budget, just like you would your finances. And I want you to get out of the idea that tracking calories is a bad idea. And I want you to also ignore three or four nutritional muppets that have been on the CEO, Diary of a CEO, Stephen Bartlett's podcast, that basically said that calorie counting is a myth and it doesn't work and we shouldn't be doing it. And it's all hormonal. <clears throat> Let me tell you this. They're talking utter shite. I've never heard so much bullshit in the 30 years I've been involved in the fitness industry. It's always been about calories. It always will be about calories. If you are in a calorie surplus, which means you're consuming more calories than you burn, you will gain fat. If you're in a deficit, which means you're burning more than you take in, you will lose body fat and weight, maybe muscle as well, but you will lose weight on the scales. This is non-negotiable. This is a law. This is not an opinion. It's like fucking gravity. You can wish it wasn't there and you can pretend that it's not. Jump off a building and get back to me. It's real. It exists. It's pure physics. And anyone that says anything else, you just need to walk very slowly away from them and ignore everything they say. Hopefully I got my point across there. And here's that example. I kind of touched on this before. I'm repeating myself here. 2,000 calories a day will equate to 14,000 calories over the week. We'd give someone a target, and this would be based on activity, um, the muscle mass they've got, what they're aiming for, height, weight, all these different things. We would work this out with time. For example, 140 grams per day. And this is your budget. You do whatever you like with it. But what this enables clients to do is that their target each day is to not exceed 2,000 hit 140 grams of protein a day. And this creates long-term sustainability and adherence. And long-term and sustainability equals results and results equal happy clients. It really is that simple. Here's the most important thing to think about. Total calories will trump all, which means the quality of your calories will determine your health. 
but the quantity of your calories will determine whether you lose body fat or gain body fat. So if we use that example, 2,000 calories or 14,000 over the day, I subscribe to the 80-20 philosophy, which means 80% of the time you should aim for foods that are high nutrient density, lots of fiber, quality products, so-called health products. And then 20% of the time, maybe it's 10% depending on the goal, but some of that time needs to be stuff that you don't think you can have on a typical diet, which means going for a few beers or having a pizza or a curry or some type of junk food, whether it's chocolate, wine, cheese, anything like that. <clears throat> but total calories will trump all. You could lose body fat eating McDonald's every day for the rest of your life if you're in a deficit. Your health might not be that great, but you can still lose body fat. So total calories will trump all. The formula we use in terms of protein to work out, we go for about one and a half grams to two grams of protein per kilo of intended body weight. For example, I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm not trying to gain weight as such. I weigh 80 kilos, I'm trying to maintain that. Okay, but I'm training four or five days a week. I'm training pretty heavily. Weight training at least three or four times a week. So I could aim for a one and a half to two grams of protein per kilo of intended body weight. My intended body weight is 80, as I'm not trying to go up or down. I go for two grams per kilo. So I aim for 160 grams per day. If I get 140, not a problem. If I get 165, not a problem. In and around that time. If I was a professional bodybuilder, powerlifter, American football player, rugby player, strong man, I would aim minimum two grams per kilo, maybe two and a half. That'd be closer to 200 grams of protein. They can synthesize a lot more protein, create more muscle and strength. For the vast majority of you watching this, that will ever watch this, that's not going to be relevant. Carbs and fat can fluctuate with preference. Again, I've just jumped ahead of my own slide. 80-20 philosophy, 80% nutrient dense, 20% WTFYW, that means whatever the fuck you want. Whatever the fuck you want. That creates sustainability, consistency, and sanity. Okay. The best diet you can be on is the one you can stay on the longest. I've said it before, which means no elimination, no restriction. Anyone that says you need to eliminate carbohydrates, again, walk away slowly from them. Anyone that says you need to go on a carnivore diet and avoid fruits and vegetables, again, will it work? Yes. Have the long-term health benefits been discovered? No. Is it wise for most people? Maybe not. Is it sustainable for most people? Probably not, most definitely for most people. Eating, if you don't want to ever eat carbs again, which means avoiding most of the things that are fun in this life, do the carnivore diet. But please understand this. The only way that someone loses body fat on a carnivore diet is by being in a calorie deficit. Okay. My way, 80-20 philosophy, hitting a budget with a protein target, no elimination, no restriction, means you're not on a diet you still get to eat your fun foods whenever you want and there's no guilt around this okay no guilt around it that's the key here's a good idea to think about very, very important i want you to stress this there are no good or bad foods only good or bad diets or eating plans okay so we want to stop labeling or demonizing, I put a picture of a burger up there. Most people would say, oh, the burger is unhealthy. It's not unhealthy when it's part of a quality diet plan. Okay. Maybe it's got 500 to 1,000 calories, depending on the size of the burger, the sauces, the mayos, whatever, the cheese. It's a ton of calories, lots of fat, lots of salt, carbohydrates, good amount of protein but it can be part of a healthy plan. So let's stop demonizing certain food and saying that's bad and that's good. I've seen people get fat eating healthy foods. I've seen people lose weight eating junk. Okay, there's only good or bad diets. Number two, a massive reason why. This is a big, big thing, the mental side. So we looked at what you have to have in terms of nutrition, but a massive reason why. And a goal, of let's say someone wants to lose 30 pounds, for example, 
when someone says to me, you know, Gav, I just want to lose a couple of pounds for the summer. What does that mean? It's just a whim. It doesn't mean anything. There's no, there's no drive behind it. There's no motivation. There's no real reasons. But if someone says, I want to improve my health, lower my blood pressure, improve my sleep, increase energy, be a great role model for the kids. I want to love my body, look, feel, and project the energy that I want to show to the rest of the world. That's a massive reason why. When someone says to me, I want to avoid getting diabetes and be alive to see the grandkids, that's a fucking massive reason why. You have to have a massive reason why. The why needs some real emotion. You need to attach some passion and emotion to your reasons. Because when you've got a real reason why, something that's very, very important to you, it's it, you you're always going to have to push towards your goal. But with a massive reason why, that will actually pull you as well. Okay? It will pull you towards your goal because there's something bigger than you. Ah, oh, yeah, I want to lose a few pounds before my holiday. But when you're thinking about, I want to be alive for the grandkids, every time you get up, and you don't feel that motivated to go to the gym. And you think about, well, why am I actually doing this? What's the real reason, the motives behind this? And that can help pull as well as you pushing. Without a whip, without a why, it's just a whim. It really is. Think about having a gun to the head. Gun to the head. If I said to you right now, disclaimer, one, I haven't got a gun. And two, if I did, I wouldn't put it towards your head. We're in the UK. We don't have guns. You Americans, different kettle of fish. Put a gun to your head and said, you're going to lose 30 pounds or blow your brains out in the next six weeks. And you've struggled with your weight all your life. I guarantee you'd lose 30 pounds in six weeks. Why? Because when the why is big enough, the how becomes irrelevant. Because the consequences would be severe. Well, more than severe. They'd be fatal. So you'd be going to the gym three days a week. You'd be eating 800 calories. You'd be doing everything. You'd be weighing in. It wouldn't matter what your hormones were. It wouldn't matter about your self-limiting beliefs. You would do everything. You would not eat for a week at a time if it meant survival. Now, if 100 out of 100, gun to the head, is here, and sitting on your bed, Eating Cheetos all day is one out of 100. Wherever you on that scale of one to 100. Maybe you're at 50, 60, but what do I get to 70 or 80? Attach a why, a positive reason to why you want to achieve. And you're going to see yourself move up that scale. And ultimately, you're going to get better results. All right, number three, moving on swiftly. Just quickly, anyone in the chat has got any questions? Hopefully you're enjoying this. I see Michael's there. Um, any questions at all from anyone? Anyone wants to say hi? Let me know where you are. If not, I'll crack on. So number three, patience. So look, fat loss is boring. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. Fat loss is boring. It's monotonous. It's doing the same things over and over again, week after week. But the actual skill set for losing body fat is so simple. But the mindset is very, very hard. That's why people fail. The skill set we can teach to a five-year-old. Here's the skill set. Control your calories and make sure you're in a deficit. That's it. That's all you need to do to lose weight. Now, why is it so tricky for so many people? Because the mindset behind that is very, very hard. And there's a lot of nuances. Why do people eat overeat food? Addicted to food, um, trauma, self-limiting beliefs, self-sabotage. It's food tastes great, alcohol tastes good. There's a whole, it's another different ball game. The mindset around food. When you're happy, let's go and eat. When you're sad, let's go and eat and drink. When you're pissed off, let's go and fucking drink. When you've lost your job, I need to go and get smashed. The food and drink are very, very emotional it's the only drug-like substance, bear in mind, so this drug-like substance, food and alcohol. Alcohol is a drug, but food, drug-like substance that we have to have as human beings. Alcohol, cigarettes, heroin, cocaine, you name all the drugs that people enjoy, like. You don't have to have them to survive, but we have to have food, okay, which is why this is so tricky. 
So it's like giving a drug addict, look, there's a gram of Coke. Just have three lines. Don't have the whole gram. Don't be a naughty boy now. Just three. Just three beers to an alcoholic. It's not going to work. They're going to drink all the beer. Coke addict's going to take all the Coke and then go and find some more. It's the same with food. Bearing in mind this as well, a lot of people say that sugar is addictive. Sugar itself is not addictive. The combination of carbohydrates, processed carbohydrates, which tends to be sugar, and fat, and salt, and smell, and crunch, and texture, and environment, mix that with trauma and using food as a crutch. That is very addictive. Possibly more addictive than drugs. Possibly more addictive than drugs. But sugar itself is not addictive. Otherwise, if it was, why would you go and drink a Coke or have a burger or have a cookie? Think about all the foods that you love. It's not pure sugar. And even if it is, the purest form of sugar in food source would be like the, the sweets you get in a pick and mix. But even then, the smell, the taste, the texture, the environment at the cinema. <clears throat> no one's pouring pure table sugar straight into the mouth because that would be the quickest way to get sugar into our body if sugar was addictive. No one's like cooking up sugar and injecting it straight into their veins because sugar is, itself is not addictive. It's the combination of things. Okay. All right, number four, bulletproof mindset. Many people have many negative self-beliefs around their weight and their ability to lose weight. The truth is we weren't born overweight. Now, honestly, some people have much better genetics than others. Some have worse genetics with regards storing body fat. Some people are more muscular. There is a certain genetic component to this for sure. That said, there's no fat people in a famine regardless of genetics if you overweight if, if you if you're overweight and obese it's because you've eaten more calories than you need to burn for an extended period of time the problem is when someone is very very overweight or obese they've got a lot of negative self-beliefs very often they've tried things before and it's not worked so they've almost given themselves evidence that they can't lose weight they've tried everything before carbohydrates i just blow up i've tried a couple of diets before nothing works well, they may have tried two or three things before. They may have tried 30 things before, but they haven't tried the right thing for a consistent period of time. It doesn't matter how much effort or how much motivated they were, not going to work. So very often people give themselves evidence as to why diets won't work. So they've got negative self-beliefs, which leads into self-sabotage and then poor self-esteem. So when a client comes into the program, the first thing we do in the very first couple of weeks is overcome these potential negative self-beliefs and get them to what I call trust the process. Okay, trust the process. Even when they don't think this is going to work. I've tried calorie counting. It didn't work for me. Okay, you didn't do it properly. You didn't do it properly because if you'd done it properly, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Because here's the thing. Counting calories and staying there for an extended period of time while still having a life, hitting a target, getting protein up and doing all the things I've talked about works only 100% of the time. Only 100% of the time. I've never seen anyone in 20 years of working with clients that hasn't been able to lose weight. Some will lose weight faster than others. I've had three ladies in the last couple of years working with me that had an underactive thyroid gland. and Even they could lose weight despite trying everything before. Okay, so we get clients to trust the process, ignore previous failures because they've given them evidence, false evidence appearing real. You've heard that fear, the acronym for fear, false evidence appearing real, bullshit story they've told themselves, failures, I can never lose weight. And also ignoring the naysayers, especially when someone's been overweight for a long time, they might have an identity attached to their weight. Oh, look, there's Big Bob. There's, come on, big man. Or And people, you know, become their identity. I've had people that have been scared to lose weight because they think they won't be the jovial character when they're out with their friends. And they've also, when every time they go on a diet, everyone says, oh, Bob, you're never going to be able to lose weight. You've tried everything before. Why bother? So they quit too, too soon. 
don't quit. The only way you won't lose weight if you're on a program that's going to actually work is by quitting. Ignore the naysayers, don't quit. All right, number five, discipline. Discipline is what's needed, my friends, and not motivation. Not motivation. Everyone says, oh, I'm just not motivated. Good. You don't need motivation. You need habits and discipline. M motivation is finite, which means it runs out. Okay? Now, motivation is often very high when you slept well, when your job is going well, when you're getting on well with your wife or your partner, your girlfriend, whatever, your boyfriend. I don't know. When things are good, when there's money in the bank, when your relationship with the kids are going very well, motivation tends to be high when things, the wheels of life, the cogs of life are turning very nicely. Great, I'm going to get up early, get to the gym. But if that sleep's devastated or you're hungry or you've got that meeting at nine o'clock looming in your head, you've got the, your boss has been a bit of a ball breaker. Yeah, I'm not motivated. But discipline gets you there. Discipline is doing what needs to be done regardless of how you feel in the moment. And the best way that I've found to build discipline is to block out calendar time. So, for example, let's say a client says, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to get my workouts in. Or, I'm struggling to eat healthy food. Or I'm very busy with work and I tend to miss lunch and I'm snacking. The way to do this is to block whatever you want done out on the calendar like you would a dentist appointment. Okay, think about the dentist. I call it the dentist hour. Two reasons why I call it the dentist hour. The dentist, you don't miss. Two reasons, because they charge you 50, 100 bucks, whatever that your dentist costs, and your teeth fall out. So you don't miss the dentist. So imagine you had the dentist at 7 a.m., Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for the next 12 weeks. Would you miss it? You'd be like, bloody hell, the dentist again. But I'm going, because there's consequences. So you can't allow your own appointment in the diary to be you can't allow, allow yourself to get off the hook treat it important like you would the dentist or a meeting with the boss if your boss put a meeting in your diary at 7 a.m five days a week for the next month apart from him being a bit of a prick for doing that but if he did or if she did would you be there the answer is 100 percent yes why because if you didn't your job would be in jeopardy. That's the way you need to look at your own health, your own nutrition, your own exercise. It's important. Discipline around your own health. Don't let yourself off the hook. Oh, I'll just hit that snooze. I'll go tomorrow. No. I'm a bit tired. I've got a sore leg. Get your ass up. Get to the gym. Do the things you said you were going to do. Block out that calendar time. Screw motivation. Focus on discipline and habits. Is this helping, guys? Anyone in the questions? Anyone in the chat? Drop anything in. If not, we'll crack on. All right, number six, consistency. Very often a client will come into the program and they're not getting the results they want and it will all come down to being consistent because a lot of people have the mindset, well, I'm going to go to the gym five days a week and then in the second week they don't go anything. It's better to go two or three times a week and have consistency, slow and steady wins the race with consistency. Fat loss, as I said, is boring, it's monotonous. It's doing the same things over and over again for an extended period of time, 12 weeks, 24 weeks, 48 weeks, a year for a lot of my clients. So it's not about going in 100% every, all or nothing, but doing the slow, steady things consistently for an extended period of time. Consistency is what we need. Seven. And on to exercise. And I've broken this down into three parts. We'll look at steps per day, resistance training, and cardio. And I'll tell you why I think we need all three. So I get all my clients to do between five and 10,000 steps a day. And this is before we would even look at the gym, before we look at the peloton, before we look at weight training, swimming, dancing, whatever their choice of exercise may be or their preference and because step going for a walk or steps is what i call the low hanging fruit there's there's no barrier if you if you can walk you don't need any gym kit you don't need to put your trainers on 
you don't need uh, you don't need any equipment or anything. You can just put the laptop down, put your phone down, whatever you're doing at work. Go for a 30 minute walk. You can do that a couple of times a day. It's low barrier, it's low hanging fruit, but it's so beneficial. The mental health benefits are fantastic. Fresh air, oxygenated blood, put a podcast on, learning, do some calls, make use of that time. It can be a walk in university. Get the steps in, boost your BMR. So not only we're we trying to control the calories on this side, giving you a budget, protein target to hit every day, we want to boost that BMR. BMR is base or metabolic rate. This enables you to eat a little bit more food and it gets you into that calorie deficit so much easier. So we have this going on in the background, five to 10,000 steps a day. And it's just a random number, but it's just about 30 to 60 minute walking every single day. And it's not a, a, a slow crawl and it's not a too brisk. It's a pace where if someone was walking alongside you, you could have a comfortable conversation with you have a comfortable conversation. You want to be getting your heart rate up to around 120 to 130 beats a minute. So it could be at different paces depending on your level of fitness. But don't, you know what? Don't look at too much into the science. Just get out there, go for a walk. Low hanging fruit before we even look at cardio and weight training or any other exercise. Resistance training. Everyone, male or female, should be doing resistance training three times a week. Even if you don't really enjoy doing weight training in the gym, you should, you have to do resistance training only if you want to live a long life. If we look at the three pillars of health and the three main things that are driving you staying alive as long as possible in good health, longevity, resistance training, a VO2 max, which is the maximum uptake, uptake of oxygen that you can take in, basically it's your cardio and sleep. We're not going to talk about sleep today. Resistance training three times per week. Now, this is more relevant for, in fact, this is for most for most men. So a lot of men making mistakes, um, certainly in the 20s and 30s, of splitting body parts up. If you're in your 20s and your recovery capabilities are very good, your diet's on point, you're not drinking too much alcohol, you're sleeping well, maybe, maybe you could do what we call a bro split where you're splitting body parts are like chest and back legs, shoulders and arms, or any combination or variation of that. If you're over 30, if you're over 40, 100% 50, you want to be training full body sessions every time. You're going to get more bang for your buck. You're going to build more muscle, increase your metabolism. Your recovery is going to be better. You're going to burn more calories. I will die on the hill anyone tells me anything different now if you're a sports person you're training for a specific sport professional or a very high standard county level maybe maybe you would want to target different areas but for the vast majority of you watching this you benefit you get more benefit from doing full body sessions or at least an upper body session and a lower body and then maybe repeating a variation of that a third time okay is our resistance and cardio three different ways walking mentioned that the steps zone two could be a little bit higher i mentioned i said about 120 to 130 beats for walking it's probably a little bit lower than that to be fit to be perfectly honest zone two is what we call a low intensity steady state and this is probably usually best achieved on a stationary bike or an incline on the treadmill i tend to swap between the two i do 15 minutes on an incline treadmill and on a bike, about 30 to 40 minutes, two or three times a week, zone two. 130 beats per minute. Again, the intensity for some people, the fitter you are, 130 beats per minute is going to be easy. If you're very overweight and out of shape, 130 beats per minute is still going to be fairly challenging. And we've got HIIT, high intensity interval training. That could be um, jumping, skipping, um, sprinting badminton, squash, football, or soccer, as you guys in America, North America would call it. Anything stop-start interval training, circuit training, high intensity. Okay, We want to have a range of everything. We want to get some steps in. We want to have several sessions of low intensity throughout the week. And we want to have one or two high-intensity sessions, which will actually push the heart and increase that VO2. Okay, so there's our cardio. All right, guys, that's it. We've, I said 45 minutes. That's not too bad. That's 40 minutes. We're done. Uh, just a 
mention this again. If you want a free copy of my cheat sheet, please email me. Hello, gavgillybrand.com, and I'll fire that over to you. Um, anyone there with any questions? And look, if you want more help with this, I'm more than happy to book a 15-minute no-obligation call, gavgillybrand.com forward slash book a call. I would love to chat to you. I'm not going to try and sell you anything. I'm just going to find out where you are with your health, your fitness, how much weight you want to lose, what the obstacles are, and then give you a plan. Now, I'll be, I'll be completely honest with you. Some of you that book the call will want a little bit more. You'll want to learn, learn about coaching. And if that's for you, we can have another conversation about that. But this call, I promise you, is no obligation. I won't try and sell you anything, but I will just help you the best I can to get the best results and get this fat loss going, help you lose that body fat. Right, guys, thanks a lot. If you're listening in um, live, just didn't want to chat. Thank you for being here. If you're watching the recording, Hopefully you enjoy this. If you've got any questions at any time, email me on hello, gabgillybrand.com or just find me on LinkedIn, gabgillybrand. I'm there pretty much all day, most days of the week. On that note, have a great Wednesday evening, guys. All the best.